Hurricane warning. A hurricane is expected within 48 hours. If advised to evacuate, do so immediately. I never really took those warnings seriously. In the tropics, a little category 2 hurricane is no big deal. When I first moved here, I made sure to head to higher ground and heed the warnings given to me by the local TV station. But after returning home with minimal damage to the surrounding area, I realised it was just a waste of time. Better to just board up the windows and wait it out. So, Hurricane Gloria rolled in one August afternoon. It started out the typical way, the wind slowly began to pick up, and all the last minute shoppers raided the local supermarkets looking for batteries, generators, water bottles and foodstuffs. I was content with my candles, flashlights and the canned soup that I was usually able to cook up in my gas stove. The wind picked up a little faster than usual. I guessed that Gloria was going to pack quite a punch rather quickly, which was fine since those kinds of storms had a tendency to roll by faster. I was hoping to get back to work as soon as possible since all the stores were closing before she came in. So I stayed home, watching the news as it began to get dark and the wind really began to pick up. The quiet whistle slowly started to turn into a roar and the wind whipped by the bending palms. As expected, The power went out after a few hours of this. I was already prepared with flashlight in hand and began lighting the candles in my living room. It was around 8 o'clock and still too early to sleep, so I made myself some soup and decided to catch up with some reading via flashlight. By the time I searched all the boxes for my old books, cooked up my soup and ate, the streets outside were already flooded. Since my home was elevated, I wasn't too concerned, but to venture out into the night would mean trudging in the water up to my knees. Thankfully, I had all I needed in this tiny little house. I decided to sit in my favourite chair and get to reading. I must have fallen asleep because I was awoken, book in lap and flashlight dead on the floor, by the roaring of the wind and an odd sound coming from outside. I was a bit startled because the wind was beginning to sound dangerously loud, more than I had expected. It also sounded like something was banging into the outer walls, it was circling my house, banging into each wall and then coming around again. I was worried at this point, thinking maybe I should have listened to the reports and got to higher ground. If my house takes too much damage, I'd have to dredge through the deep flooding to my neighbour Alice's house which was nearly 15 yards away. The old lady lived by herself and has seen her fair share of hurricanes, so I knew she would be sticking this one out as well. The banging would continue, stop for a while, and then continue in the same pattern again, always accompanied by a scratching sound. All of a sudden, it banged hard against the window. I nearly died from fright it was so loud. I heard a crack. It didn't sound as if the glass shattered, but quite possibly put a crack into it. Fearful that something was caught into the wind and causing damage, I decided to open the front door to see if I could peer out and see if anything had gotten caught up in my house. Likely fallen branches or something similar. Since the flashlight was dead, I decided to use my cell phone for light until I could find more batteries. I went to the door and braced myself since I knew the wind was heavy. It blew the door right open, but I was able to get a handle on it. I looked to my left towards the window and I could see a large crack down the centre. Though it was cracked, the window was still boarded well enough that it would hold. I went to turn to my right to see if anything else was damaged, when I saw a large, black, hairy thing clinging to the corner of the house on the far side. I was only able to get a quick glimpse of it, because as I turned and looked, and rolled along the side of my house out of view. I wondered if this was what was causing the entire ruckus out there. It was about the size of a small to medium animal, but I thought it couldn't have weighed very much because it was high above the ground near my roof. The wind had to have carried it to that high of a spot, because there was no way any animal or heavy object could cling to the side of the house like that, at least none I'd ever seen. I must admit, when I saw it, I got a little freaked out, 
but I put it out of my mind because weird things are always flying about in the heavy wind. Could have been an old man, Seamus's wigs, all wet and tangled in mud for all I know. I went and sat back down in my chair. It was almost 1am now, but I could not get back to sleep. I just lay there, listening to the roar outside. The banging started up again. I listened as it started at the front of the house, moved around to the side, scratching and banging its way along into the back of the house. And then a huge crash. Something smashed through the back bathroom window. I must have forgotten to board up that window since it's small and slightly protected by high bushes. I get up, walking in the direction of the noise. Using my cell phone for light, I can hear the whistling of the wind through the open window. The door is open about six inches, so I push it open, and I saw something lying on the floor in the dark. I notice I'm stepping in murky water. The thing is dripping wet. It created a pool of water on the floor. It's halfway behind the shower curtain which had gotten ripped off, but I can see dark, feathery and matted looking hair poking out. Is it some kind of animal? I was afraid to get close to it. And with my cell phone, the only way I could get enough light would be to stand next to it. So I decided I would try to find batteries for the flashlight instead. I ran to the living room, picked the flashlight up off the floor, pulled the AA batteries out of my TV remote and stuffed them into the back of the flashlight. I turned it on and inched my way back to the bathroom. I turned my flashlight towards the thing. I saw nothing but broken glass, the torn shower curtain lying beside sticks and mud. It was just gone. At this point my heart sunk into my chest and I began to feel very afraid. It was definitely not old man Seamus's wigs because if it moved, then it is alive. I tried to calm myself by thinking, maybe it was a raccoon or something and it crawled back out the window. I decide this is all too much for me, so I make the decision to go to my room, lock the door, and I don't come out till daybreak, no matter what. The darkness is probably just playing tricks on me, and I'll probably find Seamus's wigs tucked behind the toilet tomorrow, likely carried there by the wind and the puddle of water that filled the bathroom floor. As I make my way towards my bedroom, I notice my bedroom door was closed. I don't remember closing it. But I suppose I just forgot with all the fright. I open the door and look around the dark room. I don't see anything out of place until I saw it. A large floor-length mirror stands across from the open door I'm standing in, and behind the door I saw the figure of this thing. It was standing in a crouched position looking at me through the crack in the door. I spun around and I saw its hideous eyes. A huge, oversized, muddy, red bloodshot eye staring at me, opened wide like a predator that had just spotted its prey. I immediately ran for the only other room with a door, the bathroom, and I slammed it and locked it. Within moments I heard it barreling after me. It began pounding on the door. I knew the door wouldn't hold. I heard the wood beginning to crack. I turned. I saw the open window. I knew at that moment my only chance was to make a run for it. I managed to pull myself up into the window and clumsily fell out, sinking into the water that's nearly up to my hips now. It's muddy and full of debris, but I'm slowly able to pull myself through it in the direction of my closest neighbour, Alice. Alice might be an old woman, but she's tough, and since she lives on her own, I know she keeps a shotgun with her. If only I could get there, I know I'd be safe. I'm almost a quarter of the way there when I see my front door fly open. The wind had significantly died down, so I knew it was pushed open from the inside. I didn't stop to see what came out because I'm pulling through the water with all my might. Moments later, I heard a splash. I know it's coming for me. I'm nearly there. The house is only about 12 feet from me when I look back. It's under the water, only a few feet behind. I can see a big, black blob through the murky water, and it's gaining on me. I start screaming for Alice, but I'm not sure if she could hear me since the wind is still rather noisy. Then I felt something wrap around my ankle. I don't have time to think, I just pull away from it, continuing on. As I yank my foot away, I feel tremendous pain, and a moment later I see blood coming up from the depths. I keep moving, yelling for Alice. 
when I see her looking out the small window in her front door. Soon, I'm near her front porch. She pulls open the door for me. I'm crying, and I push past her, collapsing inside of the doorway. She looks shocked to see me, wet and covered in mud. I tried to tell her what I saw between my sobs, and I could tell she didn't know what to make of my story. She looked outside and told me there's nothing out there. I tried to convince her that something was chasing me, and though she doesn't believe me, she goes to get her shotgun at my constant requests. With the door closed and locked, I look through the little window. The wind is strong, but I can tell the storm is almost over. Oh my goodness, Alice says. What happened to your leg? I had forgotten all about it. I looked down and I saw a huge tear in my leg, a round row of puncture marks, which is wide, but not deep, and bleeding badly. It looks almost like a bite. Let me clean that up for you, she says. She goes to get her first aid kit and starts to clean it up. Hmm, she says. What in the world is this? Out of my leg, she pulls a large white object, like the size of a penny. She goes to the sink and washes it. Well, look at that. It looks almost like a shark tooth. These storms really do carry in some strange stuff. <laughs>